makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carol Ash with Alan Reed as Pasquale. <laughs> You know, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a typically American product that appeals to people of all ages and nationalities in all parts of our country. And the Wrigley people feel that Life with Luigi is a typically American radio program, a friendly, enjoyable show that sort of symbolizes the American spirit of tolerance and goodwill. So the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi each week and have you join them in this pleasant half hour's entertainment. And now let's read Luigi's letters. He writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Vasco in Italy. Dear Mama Mia, <laughs> since I'm here, I'm learning more and more about America every day. I'm learning a lot from my friends, my countryman Pasquale. And most of all, from my night school teacher, Miss Spalding. Mamma mia, she's a beautiful. And she's a talk American, it's so pretty when she's open up her mouth. It's a come out like a Webster's Dictionary with a hot fudge Sunday. <laughs> you know how I wrote to you before how we have a little get togethers after class? Once Amma had one, once Horowitz had one. Hey, you remember, at the was at the time, I'm sent to you the recipe for a gefilte fish. <laughs> well, tomorrow after school, Miss Balding is having a little get-together in her house. And she's invited the whole class and their wives. All the Horowitz and Schultz, they're going to bring their wives. Well, it's the time now I should go to my night school class, so I'm write to you more about this little get-together later. Roll out the barrel, we're gonna have lots of fun. All right, class, quiet, please. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Present. Mr. Horowitz? Present. Mr. Olson? Present. Mr. Schultz? I do render the... Uh... <laughs> oh, God, I smile, everybody. Oh, Miss Balding, I'm going to be the life of your party. <laughs> and Miss Balding, uh, what a time you want to wish you to come? Oh, any time after 8.30 will be fine. How oh, good. And Miss Balding... Maybe you want I should have come a little earlier than everybody and I help you prepare the food? Oh, that Luigi is a fast worker. <laughs> he figures he can wangle a few A's out of me spoiling over the fruit salad. <laughs> well, it's very nice of you to offer your help, Mr. Basco, but I'll have no trouble preparing the food by myself. Oh, oh, Miss Spaulding, my, my wife Olga, she, she just can't wait to meet you. And my wife Esther, she'll be delightful to meet you. Thank you. And I'll be happy to meet your wife. Oh. I'm a spoiling. Uh, I'm a got to know wife to bring it to your little get together. Is it all right if I'm a come along? Oh, surely. Oh, uh, and I'm a just a thought. Uh, I'm a going to be alone, and. Uh, and are you going to be alone? <laughs> yes. Uh, Luigi, you could bring Rose, huh? Ah, he just woke up a beautiful friendship. <laughs> Mr. Basco, you may bring along whomever you like. Mr. Pasquale and his daughter will be very welcome. Sure, Luigi. Bring along Pasquale. is a lot of fun. Yo, ho, and that Rose is a real jolly girl. Even though she is a little stout. A little stout? When she eats rye crisp, the box gets fat. <laughs> Luigi. Does Rosa still weigh 250 pounds? Well, Horowitz, Pasquale says that she's lost the six pounds. Eh? Stop. Rosa never loses six pounds. She just gives them a six-hour pass, and they are back by supper time. <laughs> ah, stop looking so worried, Luigi. Just because you bring along Rosa to the party, that don't mean you got to marry her. Yeah, but I sure see you don't know Pasquale. If I'm going to talk to Rosa twice in the same day, he starts a print in the wedding invitation. <laughs> so what, Luigi? Marriage ain't so bad. And if you should marry Rosa, don't you think that will make you happier? Don't you think your life will become richer? 
Don't you think Rosa would add to your enjoyment of things? Sure, sir. Well, is she? Luigi, I just dug the trap. You gotta get yourself out. <laughs> Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. <laughs> Look at you, little pumpkin head. <laughs> Eyes are pink like a rabbit. Hair black as a coal. Cheeks are so red. The nose is so yellow. Put them all together and there you stand. My little greenhorn. <laughs> hey, Luigi, guess what? You know our countryman, Martini? He's a throwing a private party in his house, and he wants I should bring you along with a Rosa. But, Pasquale, I'm not going to go tomorrow. I'm going to another party. Stop. I know it's a two-party system in America, but are you stuck with my party? <laughs> well, Pasquale, if it was any other night... But you see, my teacher, Miss Spaulding, she's making a little get-together. Oh, oh your teacher. Uh -huh. She ain't satisfied with keeping you after school, and now she's taking you home, eh? <laughs> no, 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 Pasquale. It's for the whole class. I don't care if it's for the whole country. Who means more to you, your good old countryman, a martini, or a pretty little blonde American girl? Don't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> but, Pasquale... Hey, I don't like it the way you're talking about to my teacher. So if you don't oh, mind... Oh, Luigi, that's mad. Do you love your teacher? Well, I'm a... Uh, I'm a like her. You like her? I'm... I'm a more than a like her. It's, it's like a new word I'm a learner. In a fatuation. <laughs> In a fatuation, huh? Eh? Uh-huh. Well, Luigi, if you've got to have an infatuation, pick a fat girl. <laughs> Now, Pasquale, please, no marriage talk. Oh, no marriage talk. But you would have been willing to marry an American, a girl like a Miss Spaulding, if she would have said yes, eh? Pasquale, let's not talk about it. Besides, uh, I'm a no asker, so she couldn't say it. No asker and a couldn't say it don't mean it couldn't be if you was the one to do her. <laughs> Luigi. I'm bringing you to America. I don't mind if you eat American food, or speak American language, and even have American teachers. But when you're looking for a wife, it's a goodbye, America, hello, Italy. <laughs> Luigi, you're going to Martini's party tomorrow, and there's no doubts about it. When a nice old countryman like a Martini is to go to the trouble to make a party... Oh, wait, wait, uh, Pasquale, I'm almost forgot. Miss Spalding has invited you and a Rosa to her party, too. Good. I hate the martinis of parties anyway. Can I talk to <laughs> oh, oh, my Rosa's are going to be happy to hear this news. Wait, I'm going to call her. But, Pasquale, you sure she's the one to come? Positive. Oh. Rosa! <laughs> Rosa! Rosa! <laughs> Yes, my little Cupid doll. Rosa, say hello to Luigi. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, Rosa. Rosa, forget about a martini's party tomorrow night. We all are going instead to see Luigi's the teacher, Mrs. Spaulding. Oh, goody, we're all going to be in night school. No, no, no. Mrs. Spaulding is having a little get-together in her house, and we all invited. Yeah, that's right. Well, I'm going to see you tomorrow night. Remember, 8 to 30 on the nose. So long, Rosa. Be seeing you. On the nose? So long. Be seeing you. Little pop squeak. <laughs> He's getting the talk so American as a head. Don't understand what his tongue is saying. <laughs> Rosa, I think I'm just discovered a whole of trouble what do we have with Luigi. What, Papa? Luigi's getting too American, and that's bad. Because the more his mind is to get away from the old country, the worse the chance you got with him. We got to make him feel more closer to you. But how? We can play piggyback. <laughs> stop, stop. Hey, wait, wait. I know, I know. We got to make him a conscious of his old world of blood. I got a plan. Where's that telephone? I'm going to start it right now. This is going to work. I call as a teacher at... Hello? Hello, Mrs. Spaulding. That's Pasquale's spaghetti pilot speaking. Oh, hello, Mr. Pasquale. I want to thank you for your invitation. That's a half on my behalf and a half on Rose's behalf. You're quite welcome. 
Uh, by the way, Mrs. Spalding, I don't want to be too inquisical, uh, but what are you planning to serve tomorrow night? Well, I was planning on hot dogs, hamburgers, uh, Well, I guess uh, Luigi won't mind a little indigestion. What? You see, he's on a special diet. He was got this diet from his doctor in Italy, so he's only allowed to eat Italian foods. Now, Mrs. Spalding, I would have been perfectly willing and happy to cater your whole affair for you, free of charge. Pizza, lasagna, real fine Italian meal. Everybody's going to love it. Well, that's very nice of you, but I wouldn't want to put you out. So don't put out. I take care of everything. Tomorrow we surprise the Luigi. Don't bother to take That's all right. Goodbye. <laughs> Italian food, Italian wife. I even going to get Italian a singer. Rosa, by the time that party is over, Luigi's going to feel so warm about all the world of things. He's going to feel so close to you, he's going to beg you to marry him. And what's going to be your answer? <laughs> Is it going to be no trouble translating that? <laughs> so, Mamma Mia... Tonight is going to be the get-together in Miss Spalding's house. And I'm expecting to enjoy very much. And because I'm going to invite the Pasquale, Mamma Mia, you should see how nice he's acted to me. He's took me to see nice Italian picture. He's treated me to free Italian meals in his spaghetti palace. And he's got me one year subscription to Italian newspaper. And tomorrow, tomorrow he's going to take me to see a Western picture with that big Italian cowboy, Giuseppe Otri. <laughs> but mamma mia, if he's a keep of this up, I think as soon I'm going to be talking English with Italian accent. <laughs> anyway, oh, hello, Pasquale. Hello, Paisan. Look what I got here. Oh, that's a photograph album, huh? That's right. I uh, just happened to find it in the closet. These pictures was uh, taken about 25 years ago. Oh. Recognize that it's a couple I'm standing with in this one? Sure. Pasquale, it's, it's my mom and a papa. Hey, and that's you, Pasquale. Hey, you was a very skinny in those days, huh? <laughs> I was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, look, Luigi, look at this picture. Oh, oh that's you again, Pasquale. Hey, and what's that that you're holding in your hand? A beer barrel? What the beer barrel? That's a rosa as a baby. <laughs> Cute, huh, Luigi? Yeah. Hey, how old was she there, Pasquale? About six years, huh? What are you talking about? She was one week. <laughs> I remember very good because that was the first day she was eating meat. <laughs> hey, look, Luigi. Look at the hills behind your mama's house in this picture. Oh, yeah. They're beautiful, huh? How we used to roll down at them on a soft green grass. Yes. Look, here's a picture of Kokosa, the shoemaker. Remember him? Oh, sure. When I'm a little bambino, I would sit with him in his store. And while I was a pasting up at the soles, he would tell me stories about, about when he was a little boy in, in a castle of mine. Makes you lonesome for the older country, eh, huh, Luigi? Oh, Pasquale. Don't forget, the Luigi, it's nice to have American citizen papers and live in America. But don't forget you got your roots in the old country. Yeah, Pasquale. It's a lot to what you say. You said it. And when it comes to finding a girl for yourself... <laughs> Luigi, my fellow boober. Oh, hello, Schultz. <laughs> and how are you, Pasquale, you old blimp? <laughs> I'm fine, fine, Mr. Delicatessen, man. Frida, come here. All right, Clemson. <laughs> Luigi, Pasquale, you know Mrs. Schultz. Hello, hello, hello Mrs. Schultz. Hello, friends. Oh, Clemson, my darling husband, button up with your overcoat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want you should catch a double pneumonia. <laughs> you know, Kleinholz, the doctor told you you're a weak person. Ach, stop worrying about me, Klungstein. Oh, <laughs> hey, what is it? This a Klemmel, a Klein? Holds a blue <laughs> <laughs> ah, 
she's getting you all for shimmered. <laughs> We just stopped off to see if you are ready yet to go to Miss Paulding's house. Yeah, pretty soon, Schultz. Pasquale says that we got to wait the us. Yeah, Schultz, you better go. i got to talk with the Luigi a little bit. But, all right, Luigi, we're going to go now. Yeah, we'll see you at the party. Come on, Klungstein. All right, Clemson. Let me go first. It could be very cold outside. And button up with your coat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that wife of mine, how she loves me. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodbye, Luigi. Oh, goodbye, Clemson. I mean... Uh... <laughs> Clemson, did you hear that, Klungstein? Yeah. Luigi just called me Clemson. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice couple, huh, Luigi? Yes, they're so in love. That's right, Luigi. And you know why? Because they both got the same roots. They're born in the same country, speak the same language. You're right, Pasquale. Uh, uh, Pasquale, where's Rosa? Ain't she coming to the party? Luigi, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Rosa ain't to come. What? I don't think she liked the way you talked before. Pasquale, what am I said? Well, after all, she's a little hurt by the way you keep forgetting to marry her. <laughs> well, Luigi, it's no use to argue. You and me, we go to the party. If Rosa's a change of mind, she's a come later by herself. Well, all right, Pasquale, but what a trying to make her come, huh? After all, Rosa and me, we come from the same roots. We're born, we're born in the same country. Who knows? Maybe, maybe someday I'm going to be her little Clemson. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, it was so cold, the poor horse died right there on Koski Osko Street. Well, soon a cop came along and he said, Sure, I'm Begora, I have to make out a report. Well, he started to ride down. The horse died right in front of the drugstore on 285 Koski, uh, uh, Koski, uh, uh, so he turns to the owner and says, Look, do me a favor. Would you mind if we drag the horse over to Main Street? <laughs> Is my little Clemson funny? Oh, yes. oh but darling, Klungstein, sit down and rest yourself. You've been standing for five minutes. <laughs> now I know why he's such a baby in class. Oh, Mr. Basco, are you having a nice time? Oh, sure, sure, Miss Pauling. It's wonderful. That's all right. All these are nice and married couples. It's a fine example of how people should live, eh, Luigi? Yeah. Hey, Pasquale, is, is a roast coming? I don't know, Luigi. Looks so bad. But wouldn't it be nice if you was married to Rosa? Then you could always invite some other married couples and say, Hey, how's about you come up to my house with the wife? Are we going to play some canazza? <laughs> Miss Balding, when do we eat? Yeah. Mr. Schultz, I have a surprise in store for you. I'll take a look in the kitchen and see if the food is ready. Oh, good. Oh, that Miss Balding, she's a living doll. <laughs> and so refined and intelligent. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't mind to have a daughter like that myself. <laughs> and I wouldn't mind to have a wife like that. <laughs> ah. <laughs> How do you like that, boys? Married 27 years and she's still jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? To me, my Nathan is just like Gary Cooper. <laughs> Isn't that so, Nathan? Yep. <laughs> Olaf, did you show your friends the pictures of the baby? Oh, big dig, and I almost forgot. Yeah, <laughs> there they are. <laughs> this is little Swen. He is four years old. Yeah. Oh. Nathan, show the pictures from our kiddies. <laughs> Clemson, darling, I show the pictures from our three children. Yeah, yeah. Oh, such little Klungsteins. <laughs> Come on, everybody. We'll sit on the couch and look at the baby pictures, huh? Yeah. Doesn't that. anybody want to play spin the box? Pasquale. <laughs> what, Luigi? Where's the rush? Ah, blood the will of tell. You're starting to realize how close you and Rosa should be, eh? Well, uh, yeah, Pasquale. Sure. You and Rosa belong together. You skinny and she's around. You belong... <laughs> you belong together like a spaghetti and a meatball. <laughs> oh, 
When is she a coming up, Pasquale? Oh, wait a minute now. It's a nice to see all those happy married couples, eh, Luigi? All got the same roots. There's Esther and Nathan and Carl and Frida, Sven and Olga. Yeah. Just imagine if you was silly enough to marry some American girl, how would it sound, Luigi and Hildegard? <laughs> You're so right, the Pasquale. Ah, what's the use, Luigi? I think Rosa maybe is never going to come. You've been refusing her too much, and the last time was the straw that broke the camel's back. <laughs> but a pleasure, Pasquale. Call up the camel. <laughs> All right, everybody. Soup's on. Oh, right, look. Right. My, that looks wonderful. Oh, my, look at all that food. Oh, that. Jumping, Yemeni, that was a feast fit for a king. Uh, uh, Out of the way, everybody, here comes a peasant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. Oh, don't you dare, Clemson, that ain't good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Have a spoiler. That's all Italian food. Pizza, lasagna, spaghetti. Oh, how wonderful. I thought you would like a Luigi and a wine, a too. Well, how do you like the surprise? Oh, no, no, that's no, 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 no. Sure, sure. You, you think you're going to like the food? I don't know, but I'm sure glad they caught that leopard. <laughs> <laughs> Well, did everybody have enough? Oh, yeah. Clemson, darling, did you eat enough? If I eat another bite, I'll bust. Oh, no, don't, darling, don't say that. Miss Balding, darling, tell me. Maybe you would give me a recipe for the pizza. Well, to be honest, Mrs. Horowitz, I couldn't tell you. Why? It's an international secret. <laughs> you tell me about your pizza... I'll tell you about my potato conditions. <laughs> <laughs> well, Luigi was a fine Italian meal, eh? Huh? Is it not to the better than our other kinds of food, eh? Huh? Pasquale, my heart is getting heavy. I wish you wouldn't have reminded me so much. All right, for Luigi. Hey, Luigi, look, it's your friend, the Ralph Angeles. Yeah. Hello, oh, Frank. Hello. 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 Hey, everybody, you know what a beautiful voice Sir Ralph has. How's about a little song, Ralph? Oh, 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 Luigi, you like oh, Ralph? Should sing you a nice Italian song from your hometown? Sure enough. Oh, go ahead and sing. <laughs> Questa compagna vostra, caggi ho perduto tua mia fantasia, che penso sempre, perché io da vita mia, e già volesse dicere, ma non già saccia di. A voglia buona, a voglia ben assaio, di si tinge la buia, dai non me scorda mai. Pasquale, that was beautiful. Makes you appreciate the old country, eh, huh, Luigi? Yeah. And everybody you know from the old country, like uh, maybe Rosa. Eh? Pasquale, I gotta kill myself when I'm think how I'm talk to Rosa. I guess now she's never gonna wanna see me, huh? Well, Luigi, I got a big surprise if you. I'm gonna make you happy. Miss Spalding, now you can tell everybody who's a cook this fine Italian meal. I don't have to tell. She can speak for herself. That's all right. Whoever cooked this fine meal, come out of the kitchen. Surprise! Surprise! It's surprise, eh, Luigi? You never knew Rosa could cook it so good, eh? <laughs> Rosa, I'm, I'm so happy to see you. How was the lunch? Come on, sit by me. <laughs> 
Jimmy. You like me? Oh, I'm a lucky you like the Russia. Uh, Russia. <laughs> yes, Luigi. Please, uh, call him a Clemson. <laughs> hey, Luigi, go ahead. I'll give you permission to give her a kiss. All right, thank you, Pascale. Come on, Russia. <laughs> Luigi, you feel really close to Rosa tonight, eh? Yeah, Pasquale. Well, you know, we got the same roots. I'm, I'm never in my life I felt so close with Rosa. <laughs> you feel so close, like a water family, eh? Yes, Pasquale. Good. Then when are you going to get married? Married? Pasquale, I'm going to never marry Rosa. Why not? She's too close to be my wife. What do you mean? She's like a sister to me. <laughs> So, Mamma Mia, Miss Pauling's party was a big success. And everybody is enjoyed. Except maybe Pasquale. He's still telling me how me and us, we got the same roots. And so I'm sure to marry her. But Mamma Mia, that's like a branch of mine in the whole tree. <laughs> but Pasquale, he's done a wonderful thing for me, Mamma Mia. He's made me feel proud that I'm a come from where I'm a came from. But if I could have come from some other place besides where I came from. <laughs> How would I like to come from America? <laughs> but remember me, it's like a shoe, so always it says, I, I think I'm getting a little for shimmel. <laughs> well, a good night, Mamma Mia. You'll have a son, Luigi Basco, then an immigrant. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. They present this program each week because they know that millions of Americans like to listen to the adventures of Luigi just as millions like to chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. You see, Wrigley's Spearmint is a refreshing, delicious treat you can enjoy anytime. And besides the enjoyment it gives you, chewing this good-tasting treat sweetens your breath and helps keep your teeth bright and clean. Keep some Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum handy so you can enjoy a stick whenever you want. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mac Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Ship as Miss Falding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters is open. Music is under the direction of Blood Gluster. <laughs> Friends, the Wrigley Company invite you to listen to their other program, The Gene Autry Show, every Saturday night over most of these same CBS stations. This is Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.